Okay, well, there's a clear link into the Japan story. Uh, pictures there of that powerful aftershock that was felt in the country late on Thursday night. At least three people are now known to have been killed by the 7.1 magnitude tremor. hundred others were injured. So what effect has this latest tremor had on the country's troubled nuclear plants? Well, we're being told that there's been no damage to Fukushima, but that water is leaking at another plant. Jasmina Voich is professor of nuclear engineering at the University of California in Berkeley, and she joins us now live from Los Angeles. So this report of this water leak at Onagawa, the reports also of no radiation. What do you think may have happened? Uh, first time uh, at Berkeley, not Los Angeles, um, and uh, also I can tell you that um, uh, nuclear power plants were designed to sustain 7.9 earthquake, so this type of earthquake, uh, 7.1 or 4, um, they sustained without damage. So what I suspect is simply that there was splashing of water in spent fuel pool, and water in spent fuel pool is uh, really mildly radioactive, so if uh, there was splash um, it is inside of uh, the plant, so I don't see any ways that level of radiation might be increased. Nevertheless, a very worrying situation as Japan does still uh, face aftershocks and of course is trying to deal with the fallout at the Fukushima plant. The latest happening there is the pumping of this nitrogen to pr try to prevent a hydrogen explosion. Uh, what are the risks connected with that? So basically, uh, what I see right now after two uh, weeks uh, from the big earthquake is the situation in is Fukushima plant is uh, really stabilizing. Uh, and basically, they now have electricity. They now have fresh water instead of seawater. They do have international help. So there are many teams now that are helping them out. So from that point of view, situation is much, much better than before. What they need to do is continuing uh, pumping of water to cool down, uh, continue cooling down both uh, the uh, three reactors and spent fuels that they have. And they're slowly injecting in unit one a nitrogen because inside of the reactor vessel uh, they do need to have inert atmosphere um, and no leaks of hydrogen in the secondary containment structure which caused the uh, three explosions that we had. So I think uh, uh, with this slowly injection of nitrogen situation is getting again stabilized and uh, they will have it's serious situation so they will have um, probably another several months uh, mm. of uh, continuing pumping of water and fixing uh, all these uh, pipes uh, and damage instrumentation that they had. Now they've got this problem of highly radioactive water, this problem of where to store it. Now we know that they've already deliberately spilled thousands of tons of slightly lesser contaminated water into the sea. What damage does that pose to the environment? And indeed, is it even legal to do such a thing? So basically, what they have right now, uh, I believe some of the uh, Russian container ships were nearby, and uh, they will be used to um, store some of these highly radioactive water. Um, uh, at the point, uh, two days ago, uh, they had, didn't have a chance uh, to contain that water, so it leaked out in the ocean. However, in the meantime, they were able to plug the trenches when they found the leak of this highly radioactive water. So yes, it is leaked in the ocean. Um, basically, it is accident. So no, uh, you don't have permission to do so in regular situations. And the second, uh, um, I, uh, measure, I actually read uh, a report from International Atomic Agency uh, based on the measurements that they did in the uh, 15 and 20 kilometers range uh, of uh, surface water. So the uh, amount of contaminants water is actually going down, which is reasonable because iodine-131 has eight days of uh, half-life of decay, so um, it will be uh, diluted uh, in huge amount of ocean water, so I don't see long-term environmental effects. And if we look at the exclusion zone, if we look at the exclusion zone, it will be expanded 
uh, talk of expanding it to 30 kilometers. The US has uh, already suggested that it should be 80 kilometers. Do you think 30 kilometers is enough? Um, I think uh, uh, the um, suggestion by the um, Nuclear Regulatory Commission chair in the U.S. was on the base of really um, a terrible accident in which uh, all three plants had uh, melted the cores and spent fuel pools are also melting uh, and they're leaking uh, uh, entire inventory in the air. So it is not going to happen. So from that point of view, I don't see the reasons to expand exclusion zone and the second they plug the leak. So right now there is no leak of uh, highly radioactive water into the ocean, as well as there is no leak of um, uh, radioactive particles in the air. So from that point of view, as, as I mentioned, situation is much more stable than before, and um, they have fresh water. So uh, if there is no leak into the ocean, so there is no need to expand exclusion zone. Okay, Jasmina Voish, many thanks for joining us for your thoughts there on the nuclear situation in Japan.